hey guys welcome to the channel if this is your first time here don't forget to subscribe but let's get right into it so today we're going to be doing some arithmetic reasoning of the ASVAB test so let's start him from number one it says family video stocks 1003 drama movies 518 science fiction movies 253 children's movies how many more drama titles than children's titles does family video have in stock so we know the drama we know the drama titles um, equals to what uh, equals to 1003 and then the children's title is equal to 253 and so we just take the difference and that should give us the answer so we take the 1003 minus a 253 and that should give us equal to 750 so A should be our answer for this one number two says Mr. Vlasic needs to buy two pens each for the 17 students in his class if pens come in packs of six and each pack costs $2.35 what is the minimum amount that Mr. Vlasic must spend? So if Mr. Vlasic is buying two pens each for the 17 students that Mr. Vlasic has, then we just take the 17 students and multiply that by the two pens that each of them are going to need. And when we do that, we should get about 34. 34 pens that we're going to need. And it says that if the pens come in packs of six, so the pens are going to come in packs of six, meaning that um, we can't buy any less. I mean, alrighty, so we can't buy any less, and so it has to be a multiple of six. So looking at this one, um, the number that I can see. Uh, let me see. So 34 is between what num what two numbers that are more of, of um, at least factors of six or so the two numbers at least that that, <clears throat> that come to mind are between 30 and 36. 36 would just be six times six and 30 would be six times five. But it can't be 6 times 5, or it can't be 30, because then we wouldn't be getting all the 34 pens. And so we should get a pack of 6, which will come, I mean, the whole pack, the pens that will be coming in there will be uh, 36. And then, you know, there will be 2 extra. And so it will have to be 6. Okay, so 6 times. So it will be 6 times $2.00. 35 cents and when we do that that should give us B and Brennan earns 1050 a week and Brad earns 160 a day if both of them work eight hours a day five days a week who earns a higher hourly wage how much higher is it so this one we can maybe let's label these uh, to the left side here so this is Brandon Brennan earns $1,050 a week, and Brad Brad earns uh, 160 a day. So 168 day to find out how much Brad earns a week, we can just multiply multiply this by five. And that should give us eight eight hundred. Eight 
So we know how much Brad earns a week now. Okay, so this is per week how much each of these two earn. Okay, so a question is asking how much higher is it? Okay, so it says if both of them work eight hours a day and five days a week, who earns a higher hourly wage? Well, I mean, to find the hourly wage, I think we just, give me a second here, it says Brad earns a day. So I think what we could have done for this one was instead of maybe we take the once, uh, 160 to find out that's how much they earn a day. So we can just take this and multiply, I mean, divide it by the eight hours a day that um, he works. So it would be 160 divided by eight should give us about $20. So Brad earns twenty dollars uh, an hour, so twenty dollars per hour, and then the one thousand fifty a week that Brandon earns, we can divide that by 40, 40 hours, right? Since they work five days and eight hours a day, we can just take the eight times the five days, and that should give you forty hours a week. And so we just divide Brad's by the 40 hours a week that he works to find out his hourly wage, right? And that should give us about 26, that should give us $26.25. And so if they wanna figure out what the difference between the two hourly uh, wages are, we just take Brandon's which will be the 26, 25 and subtract Brad's 20 hours from it. I mean, $20 an hour from it. And the difference should be $6.25. So it'll be, Brennan earns higher and buy $6. 25 cents. Number four says Matthew's dad is five times as old as him. If the difference of their age is 28, how old is Matthew? So we can put dad here. We use, let me use D to denote dad. And it says he's five times as old as, as, um, at the, as Matthew. So we could just yes, use five times as old as X where X represents Matthew. It says, um, if the difference of their age is 28, so now we can take the difference of their age uh, part also, right? So we could just say um, that dad, who was 5X, and Matthew, who was just X, right? <clears throat> The difference of that is should be 28. So now we can just solve for x. I mean, x should we when we subtract the x from 5x, we should get 4x. And 4x is equal to 28. And we can divide both sides of this equation by four to get rid of the four on this side. So these fours cancel. We get X by itself. X should equal to seven. So how old is Matthew? Matthew should be uh, seven. Number five, <coughs> Dana and Megan have to fill 500 envelopes for a charity. At the end of the morning, Dana has filled uh, three, three over 20 of the envelope and Megan has filled one fourth of them. How many envelopes have they filled together? So <clears throat> we can realize that this three over 20, that should be about, about 15%.
that should be about 15%. And that's just dividing it 3 by 20. That should give us about 0 0.5. Um, and then the 1 fourth, 1 fourth would also be a 25%, uh, right? This 1 divided by 4 would just be 1, 2, 5, 0, 1, 2, 5. So overall, that's how much they have failed. It says how many envelopes have they failed, right? So now that we know the percentages, we can just take the 500 and say, hey, what is 15% um, of the 500? Well, you may not know that 15% uh, right off the top, but what you could do is, I mean, you can probably know what 10% of the 500 would be. 10% would just be to take this 500 here and um, assuming that, you know, there's a decimal here, right? For every number, you can rewrite it as this 0 0.0. But 10% would just be to take this decimal and move it to the left one time. So when you do that, you get about, you get 50. So 50, 10% of 500 is 50. Well, if we know what 10% um, equal to this representing 10%, 50, we can divide the 10% here and to get 5%, right? So 5% would just be half of the 50, uh, which should be about 25. Right, so we can know that the 15%, uh, 15% 50, 15 would just be the 10% plus the 5%, which in this case should give us about 75. So 75 envelopes represent 15%. So going along the same reason, and we can take the 10% that we got here, which is 50, add it to this 15% that we already calculated, and that should give us to get 25%, right? And so it would just be uh, 75 plus 50, which should be about 125. Right. And so it says, how many envelopes have they failed together? Right. So now we're just combining these two here. And we combine, we should get uh, 200. So together they failed uh, 200 envelopes. Number six says, a school garden had been divided into seven eighth square meter plots for students. If the area of the garden is 210 square meter, how many students can get plots? Right, so one thing we need to notice here is that the school garden had been divided into seven eighth square meter plots for students. So this is a little less than <clears throat> a little less than one. And then overall the if the area of the garden is two hundred and ten square meters, then how many students can get plots, right? So we just take this two two hundred and ten and divide it by the seven eighth Um, to get the the number of students who can get plots. And so we realized that, hey, we're taking this 210 and dividing them by 7 eighth. And it, maybe dividing by a fraction isn't always the, the easiest way to go about things. And so what you could do is you can rewrite this same expression and make it a multiplication. Well, it, it so have division, but you can make it a multiplication and division to simplify this. So Rewriting the same um, equation, we can rewrite it as 210. And now we take this, because this is a, the denominator is a fraction, we can take it, flip it around, and it becomes times 8 divided by 7. And when you do it this way, I mean, this should be a bit easier to go about than what we initially had, right? So it will be 210 times 8, uh, which should give you about 1,680, and then divided by 7, right? 
and that should give you two, 240. So A will be the correct answer for this one here. Um, so let's scroll, let's scroll up. Okay, give me a second. Let's scroll up to number seven. Number seven asks, 300 school children went on a field trip. 30% of them were first graders, 45%. Second graders and the rest were uh, third graders. How many more first graders, graders were there than the third graders? Okay, so 30%, I mean, we can use the same sort of analysis that I was using for uh, number five here, right? We have 300 students. <clears throat> 300 students, and then 30% of them um, were first graders, right? Well, we know 10% of 300 is 30. So to get 30%, we just multiplied the 10% by 3, and that should give us 30%. Uh, uh, and so 30% of uh, 300 should be 90. <clears throat> so 90 should represent 30%. Right. Um, so to get 45 percent, it's a similar, I guess, a similar analysis, right, where if we know what 10 percent is, we can also know what 5 percent is. 5 percent would just be the uh, the value we got for 10 percent divided by 2. In this case, we got 30. So when we divide 30 by 2, we should get 15 and this should denote 5 percent. Right, so 15%, I mean, we can also add this back into this to get 15% where um, 30 plus 15 should give us about 45. <clears throat> and that would represent 15%. So we just take the 45 and add it to the 90 and that should give us 45%. And... we should get about 135 and this will represent 45 percent right so now we've sort of broken it down to whatever we need to get so this will be the 90 represent the first greatest the 135 represent the second greatest and they're asking us hey how many more first graders whether than the third graders and then the third graders would just be whatever is remaining right so <clears throat> uh, we can just take the 300 here to get the third graders we can take the 300 I guess one way we can also just do would just be to add the 135 we got for 45 percent plus the 90 we got for the 30 percent and that should give us 225 and yet we just subtract the 225 from the 300 to give us whatever is remaining for the third greatest. And when we do that, we should get 75. So we get 75 remaining for the third greatest. And it's asking us how many more first uh, first graders were there than the third greatest. So we just take the 90 that we got for the first greatest and subtract 75 from it. And that should give us uh, 15, right? That would just be the 90 minus 75. Should give us 15. Number eight says a dress a dress that cost uh, $155 is on sale with a discount of 25%. What is the sale price of the dress? Um, with these ones, you can always just if even if you don't know what 25% of 155 is, you can start off by getting a 10% and doing using the same trick, right, that I've been using. So, like I said, 10% would just be to move the decimal right to the left ones, and that should give us about fifteen dollars fifty fifty cents, right? So this is 10%, right? To get 20%, we just add this two times or multiply this by two, and that should give us about uh, it should give us about 31. 
she gave us about 31 so that's uh for 20 percent all right to get the remaining five percent we just take the 15.5 and divide it by two i mean 15.5 divided by two this should be about it should be about 7.75 right Uh, which makes sense. So 7.75 is 5% of the... Okay, so now we just add this 5% here to get our 25% so that we can subtract it from the 155 to get what the value should be, um, what the discounted value should be now, right? Don't we... When we add these two together, we should get about 38.75. So that's the value we get as the, this represents the 25% discount, right? So this is just a 25% discount. So to get what the discount of sale price is of the, of the dress is now, we just take this value and subtract it from the 155 that we were initially given. So if 155 subtract the 38.75 from that, And that should give you at least some, you know, something close to uh, B. So number nine says Marlo pays seven fifty uh, rent each month. Bia pay um, Bia's rent is twelve percent higher. What is the ratio of Marlo's rent to Bia's rent? So for this one, since we're getting the ratio of BS rent or Marlowe's rent to BS rent, we just have to realize that BS rent is 12% um, higher than Marlowe's, right? And so we could go through these answer options rather than doing a whole math. We could just go through the answer options, get the difference and put it over the, um, get the difference of each of these. So for instance, the first one, the difference would just be what six minus five would be one, and then put put the one over five to see what what percentage that would give you. If that gives you a percentage of twelve percent, then that should be the correct answer. But one fifth is twenty percent, so that can't be it. So a a cannot be it. And then likewise, we take uh, the sixteen, subtract fifteen from it, and we put the one over. 15 and our answer should be about uh, let me see should be about six percent uh which cannot also be the right answer we need something that is like exactly 12 percent so we do the 28 minus 25 should be three so three over 25 3 over 25, if you do the long division, you should get about exactly 0 0.12 0 .1 or 0 0.12. So the answer for this one should be C. Number 5, it says a, a cake recipe calls for 5 cups of flour to bake 2 cakes. How many cups of flour will be needed to bake seven cakes? Okay, so a cake recipe calls for five cups of flour to bake two cakes, right? So let's make the math easy on ourselves. So maybe five. So these, the two here represents the cake. Uh, the This one represents the cup of flour, right? And now they're asking us how many cups of flour will be needed to bake seven cakes, right? So let's just remember to put this in the right perspective. So we don't know what seven, uh, how many flours 
or how many cups of flour should be required to bake the seven cakes. So we can set the problem up as equal to this as the two cups of the two cakes over the five cups of flours, and then the seven cakes over the X amount of cup of flours that we don't know yet. So to solve for this, we can just multiply uh, X's here. So give me a second. Let me just do this. Else we'll confuse ourselves. So we'll, these X's will cancel. But whatever we do for one side of the equation, we have to do for the other side. So now we get, uh, give me a second here. It'll be 2 fifth times X is equal to 7. And then to get X by itself, we just multiply this by the reciprocal. So it'll be 5, 5 half. The 2 here cancel. The 5 also cancel. So that should, everything should cancel to give us 1. 1 times x will just be x. And so we have to do the same thing for the right side as well. So it'll be 5 halves. All right, and so 7 times 5 would just be 35. 35 divided by 2 should be our answer. 35 divided by 2 appears to be at least the closest value that I see here uh, would be C. And number 11 says the scale of the model. The scale of the model of a car is 1 um, to 24. If the full-size car is 12 feet long, how long is the model? Okay, so what we have to realize here is that the 12 feet, now they're asking us the answer. The, the answer they've given us is in inches. So we gotta, we need to convert the 12 feet into, into inches. So 12 feet, 1 feet equals 12 inches. And so we just take the 12 feet and multiply it by 12 to get the full inches for the 12 foot. So that should give us 144. Now we got 144 uh, feet long for the car. So to get how long is the model, to get the model, we will just have to divide this by the initial 24 here we were given. And we when we do that, so I know uh, 12 goes into 144 12 times, and so if we're doing, if we're dividing them by 24, we should get half that amount, right? So the answer should be C for this one. And 12 says, on a throw of a six-sided die, what is the probability that you will roll a number less than three, all right? Well, I mean, all the possibilities we can get are one, we could get two, we could get three, um, four, four rolling of a die, we could get four, we could get five, we can get six. Right? But in this case, they want to know strictly uh, less than three, right? So it just only be one or two are the only two possibilities we can get. So, um, and for every roll of that die, right? The probability of getting uh, one whenever we roll a die will just be one six, and then we add that by the probability of rolling a two, which will also be one six. So we could just add these two together. That should be about two six. We can simplify this further because two goes into two one time, two goes into three three times. So that should just be one third. One third. So C should be the correct answer here. And then number 13 says, a bag contains six black marbles, four white marbles. Sally takes out a black marble and does not put it back. What is the probability that the next marble she picks will also be black, right? So we can, the first, 
Okay, so the first option that she had, and then black marble. On the first round, there are going to be 10 marbles overall. And then uh, she takes out a black marble, which would just be, uh, that probability would have been 6 tenths, right? So because she's taken out one marble, now there's there are only going to be five black marbles now, right? Because she didn't put it back. So now we got five black marbles now and is asking for what is the probability that the next she pick would be black also, right? And now because there are five marbles uh, for the black ones and still there, there are still going to be four white marbles, right? So we should get five over nine for this one. Mangoes are sold at eight dollars forty cents a dozen. How many or oh, how much will fifteen mangoes cost? Alrighty, so for this one, uh, one thing we could do is this: mangoes are sold at eight dollars forty cent a dozen. How much will each mango cost? Right, so we already know a dozen, right? We can subtract a dozen maybe from the 15. It should give us about three. So we take the three. And we divide it by 12. And that should give us about three goes into itself one time three goes into 12 four times so we know that the the three remaining of the 15 would be about uh, 25 percent of the original price for the dozen right uh, let me put 25 percent here this is percent um so uh it would just be one fourth, so we could just divide the whole price to eight forty um, by four, and that should give us about two ten, two dollars ten cents, right? So that'd be the difference um, between the fifteen and the dozen that we initially had. So we just take the two ten and add it to the eight dollars forty cents that we were initially given. Uh, give me a second here, small mistake. And that should give us the price for the uh, 15 mangoes, right? So it'll be 10.50, I think. So D would be correct answer for this one. 15, it says, Rosita buys thir uh, 300 feet of yarn for a craft project. If the yarn costs 12 cents a yard, how much... Uh, how much does Rosita spend? So for this one, I think what we need to understand are f the difference between feet and yards, right? Um, and I think, and I think um, for every feet, let me see. So every feet is equal to about a third yard so so one feet would give you about 0 0.33 yards so how much does Rosita spent um, so because of this we just divide to convert the feet into yards we just take the uh, we take the 300 feet and divide it by 3, and that should give us about 100 yards. So now we have 100 yards. Um, and I'm just cutting the spelling for yards in short. So we take that and then multiply by 12 cents, right, to get the however much we need to pay. 
so 12 and then cents so let me put a dot here zero and that should give us about twelve dollars and then lastly for the arithmetic reasoning it says miss mrs lafferty's five children are six eight fourteen fifteen and seventeen years old what is the average age so i mean we just add all, add all of these together all the children's age and 17 and it's asking for the average age right so we just add all of these together and we should get about 8 plus 8 should be 14 and then plus 14 should be 28 and then plus 25 I mean plus 15 should be 43 and then plus 17 should be 60 and then all that divided by however many numbers we just added right and it looks like we're, we're adding five numbers so it would be divided by five and that should give us 12. so that's it for the arithmetic reasoning of the ASVAB here at least this sample uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel there's going to be a, a lot more videos coming in um, doing math the arithmetic section and then we're going to be doing the math knowledge and sometimes also the general science section as well so be on the lookout and subscribe if you haven't already subscribe to the channel subscribe to the channel um, and click the notification bell so that whenever I release a video uh, you get notification well thank you